I want to ask this to Carrie. How do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this, um, I think misuse PCR is not quite, I don't think you can misuse PCR. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body, okay? So that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful. But the, the real misuse of it is, is that it, you don't need to test for HIV. You don't need to test for the other 10,000 retroviruses that are unnamed also in the subject. See, somebody that's got HIV generally is going to have almost anything that you can test for because they have definitely been, HIV is a fairly rare virus. There's only one million of us out of 250, 300 million people in America that have that virus. So you have to get around, either your mother had to have it and pass it to you, or you have to really be paying a lot of attention to people that do have it and paying only attention to them and get a pretty good chance of getting it that way. It's hard to get it. But it, if you have it, there's a good chance you've also got a lot of other ones. Because you've been in the, in the market, for, you've been, it's been possible for you to get a lot of it's, it's, it's a, to test for that one and say that has any special meaning is what I think is the problem. Not that PCR has been misused. It's like what are they, is it an estimation? it's not an estimation. It's a real. It's a really quantitative thing. It How tells you it, something about nature and about what's there. But it 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 allows you to take a very minuscule amount of anything and make it measurable and then talk about it in meetings and stuff like it is important. See that that that's not a misuse. That's just sort of a misinterpretation. After all the these uh, uh, PCR, this quantitative PCR, that if you just get down to a basic virological count, it's still one in a thousand to one in ten thousand uh, HIV and one to one in a thousand, one in five hundred to one in a thousand T cells. It, and it is. No, they, that, the, the, there's very little of what they call HIV, and what's been brought out here by Phil Pot and, and, and Isai already. It, the measurement for it. Is not is not exact at all. It's not it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples. An apple is an apple. You know, you can get something that's kind of like if you got enough things that look kind of like an apple and you stick them all together, you might think of it as an apple. But and, and HIV is like that. Those tests are all based on things that are invisible, and they are the results are inferred in a sense. PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is. Um, it's, they, but it's not. It doesn't tell you that you're sick, and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. That's why it's not. So even if you believe in HIV, it can't tell the difference between virus particles or active live virus. I mean, there's a lot of questions involved in this. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you very, very much. I don't know what else I can say but to uh, let you know that we will um, hold more events where people can get together. Hopefully not when they're all out of town for the holidays. But uh, when we can have a really, really continuing and a growing movement of people asking simple questions, we don't expect to convert any. What is it? What What is it about humanity that that that, that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen? You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking. You know, he doesn't know anything really about anything, and I'd say that to his face. Nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope and if it's got a virus in there you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy and he doesn't understand medicine and he, doesn't, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda which is not what we would like them to have being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people who pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep.
to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. I mean, I, I like humans. Don't don't get me wrong, but basically, there is a there is a there's a vast the vast majority of them do not possess the the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem. That's a main problem actually with science. I'd say in this century because science is being judged by people, funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci. Fauci doesn't know enough. To, you know, if Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, he could easily do it because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina, ask Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me, but I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell me the other side. But Fauci didn't want to do it. Science isn't a set of beliefs. It's not like Methodists and Catholics. Those, those people, Methodists and Catholics can believe whatever they want to, and they say, I will believe it. I'll stick by my story till I die, right? I'm a Methodist, pure and simple. That's okay for that kind of stuff. Scientists are not supposed to believe anything. Scientists are supposed to have some evidence that leads them tentatively to some conclusion or to some action. They're supposed to be able to show that to other scientists, any interested person, in fact, who's willing to understand what it is that was used as evidence, should be able to say, yeah, I agree with that. That makes sense, using rules of inference that we've used for, since Aristotle. Okay, and it's not, it's not complicated at all. You learn it in the sixth grade, most scientists forget it pretty quickly. But science is not a set of beliefs. I mean, there's only one belief in science that has to, you have to retreat to commitment at a certain point. You have to say, we do believe if A implies B and B implies C, then A implies C. And we do believe that if P is a proposition which is true, then not P is a proposition that is false. That's all we have to believe in science. The rest of it is tentative awaiting further study. And almost every single thing that is considered to be a fact in the 20th century, in another 200,000 years, will look very silly. You know, if you just think, picture yourself being a real bright Egyptian mathematician, and thinking that you really understand math, and then see what you'd look like from the point of view of somebody in the year 2000. Did you really understand math? Nope. Was any of it right? Nope. It was all wrong in just a little way here, a little bit there, a little, there were things wrong with it. I wouldn't be surprised if 200,000 years ago from now, Aristotelian logic turned out to not be, you know, it's already starting to look kind of funny because of, of quantum mechanics. Sometimes things are true, and not true at the same time. Some things, sometimes effect precedes cause. Time isn't quite what we think it is either. Nothing is certain in science. There are no, there's no room for beliefs. Beliefs are for people. Beliefs are for things where you want to have a belief that helps bolster your courage in something in order to act. So that's what religion's for. You know, there, there you say, I'm going to believe in something that's going to help me to get through this mess out here that I've got to get through. And I'm going to do that because it's useful for me to believe that. And the harder I believe in it, the p more powerful I get in a way. Especially if I want to start be bossing a lot of people around and I can get them to believe the same thing. But that's a belief. The difference between that and science was established clearly, at least in England in the 17th century, by the Royal Society, the founding of the Royal Royal Society is still around now. They probably don't don't remember this. That same bunch of assholes, that people that won't accept my papers anymore. But they said there's a big difference between empirical science. Empirical science is something that can be done in front of other people. You can show it on a stage. I can do my experiment in front of anybody who is interested in seeing the results, and we should all agree on the results. We don't have to worry about why. You know, we really don't. We don't ever, if you, if you why long enough, you'll always come to a big because. And you won't be able to always know. But you can know what you showed. You can say, if I take this ball and I roll it down an inclined plane, it rolls down at a certain rate. It has to do, I think, with some kind of force we're going to call gravity. But I don't have to really know why it does. I can just show you that it does every time. We can make cannons that will drop balls on people's heads with the same principle. It works. I can show you that it works by making the cannon. I can show you by repeating the experiment. 
I don't have to know why, and I don't have to believe in balls because I can throw one at you. You know, I don't believe in them. They are there because I can pick them up. I have them in my hand. I don't believe in science. I don't believe in polio. Do you believe in polio? I mean, we are under the impression that there was a disease called polio that it caught and it caused certain and it got into your brain and it was terrible for you and some people died from it. We have evidence for it, but we don't believe in it. It's not in some church somewhere. And if somebody came along a hundred years from now, studied the whole thing and said, you know what, there wasn't ever a disease called polio. It was a mistake. It was something else. It wasn't a disease. It was just, you know, I mean, then you change your, your mind about it in science. You're always ready to have your favorite theory proven wrong. And if you're not, you shouldn't be doing science. In fact, most of the people that are doing science shouldn't be there. Children should not be encouraged to go into science, by the way. Children should be encouraged to avoid it unless they just can't stand not being scientists. It's not a wonderful area where everybody is happy and, and, and heroes. There are very few of us that get the chance to go over to Stockholm and pick up a prize. It's a hard job. There are a lot better jobs for people that have belief systems. I mean, if you want to believe in something, you can be a lawyer. You can believe in law. There's a lot of places in law where you can believe it's okay. You can be in church. You can be a church person. You can believe there. You can be lots of other professions. Well, you can be in real estate where you believe things. You don't do too well in real estate if you use too strict a belief system. But science is a place for people that just are too ornery to believe in anything. They say, show me. Show me why you think this is one way. And I'll try to show you another way. And we'll both do this and we'll enjoy doing that. We'll debate about what is the, the, the actual outcome of the experiment. And we'll do it over and over again until we all agree. Then we'll move on to the next step. Make some gunpowder, something like that. Make cars. You know, we don't make, we don't believe in cars. It's not a belief. They're there. You can get run over by one. You don't have to believe in them. We believe in things like God. You know, the Catholics have sort of forgotten that, and that's why they sort of took a hit by science it's just in the last century. It's a belief thing, it's faith. That's totally different from science. 